Okay, so I'm going to put my camera in the top view and that means whenever I draw out my spline it's going to be perfectly flat on this grid and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use this pen tool to draw the spline. So just left click to place your first point and if you hold down the left mouse button it's going to basically create some curvature to this line. So, that, so that's exactly what I want to do for every single point that I'm going to be putting down here. Just hold down the left mouse button to create these curved lines. So I'm going to try and get a shape that's similar to what I did in the actual thumbnail. And if I wanted to undo a point, I just need to press backspace and it will roll back to the previous point. And I can just snap to that point and continue drawing again. Right, and if I'm happy uh, with my shape, I just need to press spacebar. And now if I go to move and select this icon over here to select the vertices or the vertex points, you can see I can select these individual dots and you'll see that there's these black handlebars on here and this allows me to control the angle of curvature on these lines as well. And if I feel like there's not enough points to support a particular shape that I'm going for, I just need to hold on control and left click on here and it creates another point for me. So now it's just a matter of placing points, adjusting these handlebars and just shaping this to get something that I find to be aesthetically pleasing. Um, so like I said, I'm going to try and get the shape similar to what I did in the thumbnail and I'll just fast forward past this right now because it's going to be really boring just seeing me adjusting these points and then you guys will see the overall shape that I actually came up with. Okay, so this is the shape I decided to go with. I'm going to go to cameras, click on perspective and we need to add some geometry onto the spline right now because it's just a spline. So we're going to go back to the pen tool and let's create a circle. Right, so I'm going to press uh, scale and let's scale this down because the overall size or diameter of the circle is going to determine how thick our spline is going to be. So I'm going to make mine about that thick but we can obviously go back and adjust this and then I want to create a sweep and we make the circle and this and the spline a child of the sweep and there we go, we've got that tubular geometry in our scene. Now if I hide our sweep over here and just select the spline, you'll see I can still go back and I can select these individual vertex points. And now if I unhide the sweep and I go back to move and let's say I move this up, we'll be able to start shaping our spline and see that uh, sweep geometry on here at the exact same time. So for, for instance, in areas like this where it's intersecting, I'll just hide the sweep and let's see, maybe I need to select that vert, uh, vertex point, unhide it and maybe I need to move that up so that it's falling over this piece of geometry. So now it just becomes a matter of shaping our spline and our geometry until we get something we are happy with. Okay, so in my original scene, I actually have this piece of geometry duplicated. So I'm gonna select the sweep, Control C, Control V. I'm gonna to go to Model, go to Rotate, and just rotate this like this. Go to Move, and just move it up. Okay, so now this is what's basically gonna take up the majority of the time over here, because you guys need to get creative over here and decide how you want these pieces to overlap the other pieces of geometry. So, you can either hide the sweep like this and select individual vertex points and then unhide the sweep and move it up. Or you can go to display, go to lines, make sure you've got this vertex point enabled. Now you can see your spline underneath and you can maneuver this while still seeing a basically like almost like a wireframe or x-ray view of the geometry. All right, so like I said, this is gonna be taking up the majority of your time because you need to decide how you want these pieces to overlap each other. So I'm basically going to fast forward, and I just need to hide that sweep so I can get this other point. I'm gonna fast forward and show you how I shaped my original scene that you guys see in the thumbnail and in those preview images. Uh, but over here, like I said, it's gonna be taking up the majority of the time. It's up to you guys. You decide how you wanna shape this, which pieces you want to overlap each other uh, it's up to you. Okay. Okay, so I showed you guys the techniques of how you need to maneuver that. It's going to, like I said, take you guys a little bit of time. Maybe you've already gone ahead and start maneuvering those vertex points to get a shape that you're happy with. But this is the overall shape that I went with for the thumbnail image. You can see there's some pieces that are, uh, some of them obviously not touching each other, just basically going over the other piece of geometry. 
there's just this complexity of these interlocking shapes and let's take a little bit of time to shape it to get something you are happy with. So this is what I went with and you can see if I hide the sweep, we've got that original shape that was there from the beginning and I basically duplicated that, rotated it and then it was just a matter of moving those vertex points until you get something that you are happy with. Alright guys, so once you're happy with your shape, let's move on. We're going to create a plane and we're going to create our material, that metallic dragon scale uh, material. So I've got my sweep selected. I'm actually going to make this just a little bit bigger in my scene. Right, maybe just 130%. And then I'm going to create a plane. So this is going to be resting on a plane. And I'm going to select that plane and go to scale. And let's just scale this up so it encompasses the entire thing. And then I'm going to move this down so that it's not intersecting with our plane. So that's another thing. If your pieces are intersecting with the plane, or if they're going to be out of view like this piece over here, that doesn't matter. But if there's a lot of these pieces intersecting with the plane, try and make sure that your geometry is at least sitting on the plane like this. It's just, it makes the shadows that are casted on here from the light to look just a lot better, a lot more accurate. So that's what I did in, in my scene. And I've got my plane in the scene and we are good to go. Let's start creating some materials and setting up the lighting. Right, so I'm actually going to select this plane. Let's go to scale and just scale this down a little bit. Then I'm going to go to plugin cinema 40 octane live viewer and let's go to objects lights and let's create an octane area light. Okay, I'm actually going to just bring this to my other screen for now. So now here in our scene, let's go back to move, just position this up here, rotate and rotate it 90 degrees like that. Right, so that is just above our tubular geometry. Then I'm going to go into the octane light settings and let's put the power on 180. And here by visibility, let's turn off camera visibility just so it doesn't get in the way of our render. Now let's go back to live viewer and let's see what this actually looks like in our scene. This is a quick test. Because remember, we still need to create the actual shader for our geometry over here. Okay, whoops. So I need to rotate this this way because you can see there was no light being casted on there. Okay, so this should be fine for now. Again, we can always go back and start adjusting stuff uh, once we get the material on here. So got the octane light in our scene. And now let's get to the fun stuff and start creating these shaders. Okay, so I'm actually going to create the shader for our plane. So go to create shader cinema 40 octane octane material. Just drag and drop that on there. Double click to bring this up. Our material type, you want to put it on glossy. Here by diffuse, I'm going to change my color to like a really dark gray. And here by roughness, maybe I'll put this on 0 0.128 just to add some roughness on there. And that should be good to go. So it's just a very matte, flat, a dark gray. Uh, plane. Okay. All right. So it's time to create the main shader, which is that metallic dragon scale. So let's go to create shader cinema 40 octane octane material. Drag and drop this onto both pieces of geometry in your scene onto the sweep. Double click on that. You have a material type. Let's change this, change it to glossy. Now let's start with the diffuse. And I'm going to use the same values I used on my uh, metallic dragon scale. So let's go into color and nearby percentage. I'm going to put this on 22.556 and click on OK. It's going to make it a dark gray. Let's go to roughness. Here are the float. I'm going to put it on 0 0.525994. Press enter. So that'll add some roughness. Let's go down to the normal. Here by texture, click on this arrow, cinema 40 octane image texture. Go into the image texture. Here by file, click on these three dots. Now go to that scale sample that I supplied you guys with and let's load in the normal map. So I'm going to click on OK. I don't want to copy it to the project location. I'll click on No. I want to open up the UV transform. Right. And here by the power, I'm going to put this on 6.6 and press Enter. Right. And you can already see there's some stuff going on here. And then I'm going to go to my UV transform. And this is where we're going to be changing some settings. So over here by the scale X, Y, and Z. For the X, I want it on 0 
28712 for the y is going to be you can see now the aspect ratio has been locked i want to make sure i untick that for the y it's going to be 0, 0, 00696 now these values you'll probably have to play around with it depending on how long you decided to make this geometry because it's going to be basically these values are going to determine how it's been laid out so you'll see what i mean when uh, we actually put the displacement on here okay and the z value is going to be on zero zero three four eight three so these values worked best for me and that should be good to go now we're actually going to be applying our displacement actually let me zoom in here so we can see there we go so you guys can see that normal map on here it's it's quite small but it's definitely going to be noticeable once the displacement is being applied on there and these values just gave me an aesthetically pleasing shape for the scale right because of how this is set up but play around with these values these worked best for me okay so let's go ahead and actually create that displacement so go to displacement add displacement go into the displacement yeah, by levels of details, we want to make sure this is on 496 because this is a 4K map. You want to change this to follow vertex normal. Our amount over here, I'm going to put this on 15.972. Press enter. Then by texture, click on this arrow, Cinema 40 Octane, image texture, go into the image texture, click on these three dots, and let's load in our dot tiff, which is the tileable displacement pattern. Click OK. I'll click No. Right, so there we go. Now we're starting to see our geometry actually being displaced. And this is why I really love these patterns. It just does a lot of crazy stuff uh, to geometry. And then I'm going to click on UV transform. And then the values I've used over here, I'm going to make sure I untick lock aspect ratio. This is going to be on 0 0.33809. Okay, so it might take a little bit of time to update over there. My Y value is going to be on 0, 0 0.06404 and my Z value is going to be on 0 0.044835. Okay, and then I think that should be good to go. I'm just going to double check some values over here. All right, so our values are correct. But to actually get that metallic look and feel, because you can see now it's quite matte, it's got a matte finish to it, we actually have to go and play around with a setting here called the index. And if I put this on a value of 2.3125, it's going to, and I just press enter, so I'm going to have to just refresh that quickly. There we go. You can see it starts adding very prominent uh, what I would consider very prominent and distinct specular highlights on here. It's giving it that metallic finish, uh, but we're really going to get our final look and feel with the actual camera settings. Uh, but this is now set up. So you'll see if I just close the material editor and we zoom in here and move around, you guys can officially see that we've got our metallic dragon scale on this black backdrop over here. And it's looking pretty cool. And again, those values work best for me. They gave me this particular shape, which is a little bit, like you can see the scale has be, been stretched a little bit. Uh, and that's what I actually liked. I, I thought it looked aesthetically pleasing, but definitely go ahead and play around with some of those values until you come up with something you are happy with. And again, if you guys, if, if you find the displacement is too slow, like during the development phase until, like while you're trying to get that shape, you can basically disable that displacement, right? get rid of it, and just plug that displacement map into the bump and start playing around with the sliders until you get a shape that you find that you are happy with and then remember those values and just apply it to the displacement. All right, so we're getting towards the end of the tutorial. Let's go ahead and create a camera. I'll show you the camera settings I used as well to create uh, the final finished look. Right, so you can really see that the normal map that we added, which is actually the exact same scale, but it's just been scaled down, is adding some nice surface detail on you. You'll see if I actually disable that, we get a different result. And maybe this is something what you guys are going for. It looks like a more raw and rough um, 
metallic look and finish but you can see you can go back into that normal map and if you want to get creative guys go to the uv transform maybe stretch out this x like make it really large and you're going to get different results right so that's maybe another pattern on here from the exact same scale pattern this is where the creativity comes in it's just you can see look i'm going to increase that value now it almost looks like I don't know almost like a brush steel of some sort and that's just using the exact same uh, normal map so there's a lot of possibilities that you can end up doing when you combine displacement and normal maps together so you can have a whole lot of fun with this all right so now we need to decide how we are actually going to uh, position the scene before I actually create a camera so I'm just going to move around like this and then again this is completely up to you guys if you want to frame this I'm just going to try and find an angle that I find to be aesthetically pleasing and I already found that angle in my previous thumbnail All right, so I'm just doing this from scratch but something else to mention even though this displacement map is 100% tileable right there's absolutely zero breaks in the seams the actual like the actual geometry and where the UV maps are created and laid out will also determine where there's going to be a break in the geometry. So there's a reason why I did a top-down view because you'll see if you go to the side over here, you'll see that the geometry, everything's tiling perfectly, but because there's a seam over here on the UV map, it's not making the scale appear to be complete. So that's just something to keep in mind and that happens with any piece of 3D geometry the actual UV layout is going to determine how these displacement maps are going to be mapped on that piece of 3D geometry. So just keep that in mind. So this top down view for me worked nice. I actually found it to be, it just looked aesthetically pleasing with the way it was framed. And then once I was happy with this, I'd go ahead to objects and I'll create an octane camera. And then I'm going to be showing you my settings over here for the camera. Alright, so I'm going to start here in the live view. I'm going to click on this gear icon. I want to change my GI mode to GI diffuse. I just find that the lighting looks a bit more accurate on GI diffuse. And then direct lighting is fine. Now here by my camera settings, I'm going to click on the actual octane camera. My focal length, I actually used it in portrait mode. So it was at 80 millimeters. But again, you guys must obviously play around with this. And then let's click on the actual octane camera. Here by thin lens, I actually increased my aperture right so my aperture was on 1.563 so the higher this aperture is going to be and the closer we are to the object you'll see that there'll actually be some depth of field in our render so I'll just click enter on that okay then here by post processing I want to make sure that I enable that because I've got some bloom on my scene as well Right, my bloom is actually on 56. Okay, and then here by camera imager, I want to enable camera imager, and I'm using the my response is on. Let me see, I'm just again checking my settings over here. My response is on linear, and my exposure is on 0 0.54571. Four, I just felt like that exposure setting worked best for the scene especially with these really strong highlights and then nearby the gamma there's some gamma applied as well that's on 1.510962 and click on enter so let's go into our camera now and there we go so you'll see uh, remember what I mentioned about depth of field if I actually move the camera like this you can see that the camera is focusing on this area over here and this area is just a little bit blurred so that would be really cool actually for panning shots you can see because we increase that aperture amount this over here is getting blurred but again I was going for that whole top-down view and again if you can see over there it was starting to actually create depth of field and that's because my camera uh, was getting in contact with the actual light in our scene over there so now it's completely up to you guys these are the settings I used my camera settings the aperture and everything you decide how you want to frame this and how you want to basically save this out okay 
And of course I can go back to the gear icon, increase the max samples, that we get a much more clearer and crisp image. It will take a little bit more time to render. But now the creativity, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. You decide how you want to frame this. But those are the camera settings that I have used. Okay. All right, guys. So there's some other cool stuff you can do with the displacement. Remember, remember, because this is being controlled by a bunch of values, you can actually animate the displacement. So if you went to displacement, went into the, the displacement, and you're now timeline, let's bring this. I'm actually going to highlight that control C. But let's put this on zero and press enter. So here on zero, if I click on this icon, it's going to create a keyframe. If I move up to 50, and then I'll put that value on, uh, just I press control V to paste that, press enter, and then click on that icon. Now you'll see if we scroll back to zero, and you had to render this out, you'd actually have displacement that is now being animated on that simple tubular piece of geometry so I just think that's really cool and something that you can play around with but again guys once you've got the scene set up it's really up to you have fun with this maybe go back into the, the UV transform or the displacement over here and maybe crank up the displacement let's bring it down what does 4 look like so obviously a lot less prominent let's crank this up to something like 38 so <laughs> that looks insane uh, you can see these scales are really really being pushed out now So it's gonna be up to you guys how you want to go ahead and actually Have more fun with this so I can go in back into the UV transform here by lock aspect ratio. Let's get rid of that Let's increase the X. So Now you can see we can start playing around With the X and Y values and just get all of these different patterns on here just from using a single tileable displacement map, right? You can get a whole lot of different results. So just get creative, play around with this, maybe move the lighting around, add more lighting into your scene and see what works best. So I'm actually gonna undo that. You can even use the lighting, your octane light, if you go to light settings. You can play around with the temperature to actually light your scene over here. So if you want some color in your scene, Maybe it's some gold metallic scales. And there you go. Or we can play around with this magical slide over here called Film Index. Right? If I go ahead and actually... Uh, sorry, not Film Index. Film Width. And increase the float. You see that we get these really trippy, trippy, trippy colors in here. Right, and I've had tutorials on this. It's like how to create an iridescent or oil slick material. So you can add some color onto these scales really, really quickly using this foam with slider. So that I consider that to be like this magical slider <laughs> in the program. So just have fun with this, guys, and see see what you can actually come up with. So you can see now we've added some color onto our scales. I can go back to the octane light, use the light as well to color this uh, but obviously we probably want to keep it neutral so we can see that film width so have fun with this and, and see what you guys can actually come up with now now that you got it all set up all right guys so that's going to bring us to the end of this tutorial uh, now you know how to create how i actually created this tubular snake-like geometry with these scales on it uh, these metallic dragon scales and this is exactly Alright guys, so now you know exactly how I created this tubular snake-like geometry uh, with these metallic dragon scales on them, which I think look pretty cool. And yeah, you guys know the entire process now, and this is exactly the exactly what I did to create what you guys see over here. And over here, I was just trying different displacement maps to get different results. So remember there is 100 of these bad boys if you guys are interested. I was actually trying some from the environment and props folder. I was trying some of these sci-fi space plastics, some stylized wood. Uh, I think I tried um, some other stuff like corrugated lines. Uh, just to get all of these different results that you see over here. So if you guys are interested and you want to pick up 99 more of these displacements to use in your projects, check the description as well. In the pinned comment, I've linked to this to, to my pack but I thought I'd also give you guys just a taste or a sample so that you can use it in your scene 
completely for free and I've showed you how I've set this up uh, so you guys can go ahead animate this animate the camera angles and you can actually animate the spline as well flip I actually <laughs> I forgot to mention that so if I zoom out here right let me just hide this sweep go to the spline go to vertex if I select one of the vertexes here and we make sure you see this icon over here if I select that make sure it's enabled and now if I go back to zero and create a key point and then let's scroll to 25 and let's move this point over here and create a key point or keyframe you'll see if I move back that line is now animated so if I bring the sweep back you know see you can see over there that line is animated so you could create an animated snake slithering through here and just seeing what you can come up with. The only thing, I, the only problem I've noticed with doing this is that transition from here to this point seems to be quite robotic. Um, I don't know, like with the camera, if I place the camera here and then maybe move my camera over here and cr create another keyframe, the way it transitions to that camera looks very natural. But with this approach, you'll see if I actually pause that and click on play. It looks quite, I don't know, mechanical and not that realistic, but that is how you animate those those points on your spline. So maybe if somebody knows a more natural way to animate between two different points using a spline and those vertexes, or a vertex, uh, then feel free to comment below. But anyway, uh, that's how you do this, guys. That's how you create the tileable dragon scale metallic scene. So I hope you guys have learned something useful from this. Uh, feel free to show me your results as well. And as always, guys, thank you for the support on this channel and on my Gumroad and everywhere else. You guys are awesome. And yeah, stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. And goodbye.